What in the heck is a teetotaler attack? Teetotalers are titans and bowlers, something I'm super excited about because I use super bowlers all the time at Town Hall 14. And now there's an attack, a way that we can use with a little bit different army camp. Use them at Town Hall 15. Let's show you how it's done. First attack coming at us from JPD. In fact, almost all of our attacks are from JPD. This is one of JPD's specialties. Now with all of these attacks, you're gonna be using a Flame Flinger. I have not seen this attack used without a Flame Flinger. So you're gonna be using the FF on one side. You're gonna be doing a Warden Walk on the other side. Now there are some really creative ways that you're gonna be able to protect your Flame Flinger because that's gonna be of utmost priority. Now if you have multiple Expos on the outside, plus a Mortar, and the monolith, like if there's no way to get a flame flinger in there, then this attack just may not work. But the easiest way to do it is to put down some test barbs to see if any Teslas pop. And then after that, at the right opportune time, throw down a Yeti. And there's some really creative ways that JPD was able to do this that we'll show you in future attacks. But with the flame flinger completely clearing out one side... All of those trash buildings cleared out by that Yeti. The Warden walk-in on the other side. Now comes the main crux of our attack. Now, the Flame Flinger is going to clear out all of this portion. The main part of the attack is going to go right down the center through that central town hall. And then the RC is going to come down this side to clear that out. And then everything is going to kind of converge on this back end. So the army comp that we're going to use, of course, we're going to have the Flame Flinger, which we already mentioned. We're going to have the Grand Warden to do our Warden Walk. So we're going to need the five healers. In addition to that, we're going to have a Yeti, and again, that Yeti is to protect that Flame Flinger. We're also going to have one Titan. Now, there have been a few different armies where they've used two Titans, three Titans. For this specific army, one Titan is used every time, and this was a bit surprising to me. Three Super Bowlers. That's it. In my Town Hall 14 Super Bowler attacks, I was using five Super Bowlers. But this really seems to work with three Super Bowlers as long as you find that right base, as long as you can funnel on one side with the Grand Warden, on the other side with the Flame Flinger, and then really plan on where to bring in your RC so you don't want to be bringing your RC in on the side of the King, for example, because you're only going to get one building, maybe two. So this is a really effective attack style on those bases with the centralized town hall or the town hall that's not quite reachable with a queen walk. Now we just showed our twin hogs video and those videos do use a queen walk and a high percentage of the time you're queen walking into the town hall. In a centralized town hall situation, that's a lot more difficult, but this is where the teetotaler attack absolutely shines. This next attack coming at us once again from JPD and one of his many, many bases. So this was a creative way to look at this base. So again, we have the centralized town hall. We're going to start one side with the warden walk, and there's not much for that warden walk to do. Now on this side, we're starting out with a balloon in order to attract that archer tower's fire, also to pop any Teslas. And then again, we're putting down that Yeti to protect... That Flame Flinger. Now, the Flame Flinger is going to destroy that Archer Tower. And then next, as you can see in the line, it's going to move on to that Mortar. Now, that Mortar can do some serious damage to that Flame Flinger. But because that Yeti's in front of it, that Yeti will protect. The Yeti Mites will soften up the Mortar. So that way, that Flame Flinger can get it down into just a couple hits. Now, one thing that you really need to watch out for is if you have Battle Builders around that Mortar. I have tried doing this attack with Battle Builders around the Mortar and the mortar just does not go down, and eventually my yeti runs out, my yeti mites don't do what they're supposed to do, and then my flame flinger is destroyed, the attack is scuttled. But with this, you want to do the flame flinger on one side, grand warden on the other side. I loved how there was this open compartment on the right side where the super bowlers and the titan could have strayed, but he used his king and his queen, knowing that the flame flinger was going to destroy the walls, that they would come around and flank while sending up the main portion of his army right at the middle. Now, what is in the main portion of a teetotaler army? So, as we said last time, we're, of course, going to have one E-Titan and three Super Bowlers, but something else that's super important with that that has changed a little bit from Town Hall 14 is there are two 
ice golems. The reason for that is those super bowlers are super squishy. And if you don't have those ice golems out in front in order to protect them, to freeze all the defenses, to give those super bowlers a chance to just <sighs> breathe and heal back up with those healers, then it's not going to work. It's really important that you have those two ice golems that are put down ahead of those super bowlers. That way those super bowlers can last the entire attack. And we're going to see that in the next attack and the next attack as well because this exact same army camp is used against all of these bases with centralized town halls. Once again, with our teetotaler attack, we have JPD. As you notice, we are checking off all the boxes. We have a centralized town hall. We have a place that we can put down our flame flinger, and I love this right here because he's not putting his flame flinger on the corner as a lot of us do, he's putting the Flame Flinger next to the Mortar so that way he can get the Mortar down quickly. Of course, he puts down his Yeti in order to protect that Flame Flinger. Then on the other side, we of course have our Grand Warden going. Something that was super interesting with this attack is of course the Grand Warden's going on this side. He has a specific use for this Flame Flinger. And once he gets that use down, he decides to go ahead and pop his Flame Flinger knowing that he did not need it any longer. So the reason is because he wanted his Titan and he wanted his Yeti to join up with the main group of troops. So while the Warden's going down over here, he has this extra E-Titan, he has this extra Yeti coming down on the side. There go the two Ice Golems that we just talked about. Another thing is he always wall breaks in two places, one for the side of the King, one for the side of the E-Titan and the Super Bowlers, and then, of course, the Queen comes in behind the E-Titan and the Super Bowlers. If there's a next layer that he has to Super Wall Break, then he will bring in that third Wall Breaker, but typically, the next layer he's going to jump into. Of course, he wants to get into this compartment right here. He's going to rage up his Super Bowlers, and then he's going to hold on to his Grand Warden Tome as long as possible. With the Town Hall Poison, with Poison Towers, with the Monolith, you want to try to make sure that that Grand Warden's Tome protects as long as possible. So make sure you do not trip it early, but at the same time, you don't want to wait too long because then all of your Super Bowlers will die and your attack will be worthless. Now on this other side, we're able to get down that, that multi-target Inferno Tower with the RC, bringing it in to clean up. Then the, the RC is sweeping around on the backside while our Super Bowlers have gone straight up in the middle. Now, unfortunately, none of our Super Bowlers are left, and this is where this attack can kind of crumble. And so at this point, if you have any spells left, you want to make sure that you focus your spells on the RC. Because that RC is defensive targeting, you want it to go where it's supposed to go and attack the defenses that it wants to attack first. Fortunately, he's able to get everything. His queen's cleaning up behind the RC. All he has left is that mortar, and this attack is done. Completely tripled. Another beautiful teetotaler attack. Our fourth attack coming at us from, you know it, JPD, and this base checks off all the boxes. Once again, we have that centralized town hall. We're doing the Warden Walk on one side. We're doing the Flame Flinger on the other. And I love how he decided to distract that Mortar with just a few barbs. Make sure that you test, test, don't test. Make sure you test for traps and Teslas. And you can do that with just a few barbs. Here comes the Yeti down. Again, this is exactly the same way every single time. A little creative, depending on the base, but that Yeti goes down to protect that Flame Flinger from the mortar. Now, behind it, there's nothing. We're going to be able to get all of these defenses, plus we're going to be able to get that scatter shot right there. And interestingly enough, we almost get the Queen down with that. Now, here is the double wall break. We have the wall break on this side for the king whenever he brings the king in. We have the wall break on this side so that he can bring in those two ice golems, the E-Titan and the bowlers. So I want you to watch. We're going to fast forward it just a little bit since this is the boring part. Also interesting, on this side, the Grand Warden outranges... About, about passed it up, outranges the RC. So he waited until the RC was down before deciding to kill her. And then here comes the main crux of the attacks. Again, we're going to have one E-Titan, two Ice Golems, three Super Bowlers. Everything's going to come in. Something else that I have not mentioned yet is you have to have 
your Coco Loons to make sure that they protect those healers as much as as possible. Now, those Coco Loons will go super far. We're, we're wall breaking into that first compartment. We're jumping into that second compartment. Now, both Poison Towers have gone off. We're going to Rage right there so that way those bowlers stay super nice and healthy. And then once we get close to the Town Hall, we're going to push that Grand Warden ability. And then another thing that he's doing a lot of is he's covering those Super Bowlers with an invisibility spell. Again, that gives those Super Bowlers a chance to breathe, to catch up, to heal up. Maybe they're super low on health. You want to catch them up. That RC's coming in again to clean on the backside, and this attack was completely destroyed. This is an absolutely beautiful attack. Now, the last attack that we're going to be watching is a little bit different. It's not done by, J not jump done by JPD. <gasps> so let's go ahead and show you that last attack and wrap up this video. This last attack coming to us from George. You may recognize George from my Super Minor video that I put out last week. George is amazing on the Clan Capital. He's also amazing at Town Hall 15, especially with the Teetoler attack. So again, we have that Flame Flinger on one side. We use the Yeti in order to protect that Flame Flinger. Could have also put down a couple barbs. We have a Queen Charge going down on the other side. Now, I want to notice... I want you to notice how he does his pathing. So with all of JPD's attacks, we're flame flingering out one side, we're warden walking out the other side, but on this base, it's a little difficult. So in order to funnel out just like he would with his grand warden, he's going to put down his queen on this side, and then once the queen gets all the value that he wants, he goes ahead and recalls her. Now notice this whole side has been funneled out the Flame Flinger is falling out this side. He put down his queen so that way she can go ahead and take out these buildings. And then he's going to funnel her into the town hall. Now there's this nice little strip right up the middle that he can send his Titan and his Bowlers and his two Ice Golems. Again, this is the same exact army comp, even though we're doing it just a little bit differently. Now, unfortunately, he does lose his queen right here, but this shows the power of this attack. Also, the Flame Flinger is right there, able to take down the Town Hall right in behind the Queen, even though she went down. So now we have the main crux of our attack. We wall break into that section, and look at this nice, these nice tight lines right up the middle that his Super Bowlers, his E-Titan, we have his Coco Loon, we have the two Ice Golems. The Ice Golems are going to freeze everything up right there once they, once they get destroyed. We went ahead and poisoned the Town Hall. We're raging straight up the middle, just like we did with our other attacks. And then where is he going to bring in his RC? Oh, we just did the Grand Warden right in the middle. And then here comes the RC that's going to sweep around the backside. Now, the bad thing about this attack, again, it's a triple and it was a beautiful attack, but we're ending on the Eagle. The Eagle was saved for close to last, and we're ending right here on this Monolith. Now, the Monolith can do a ton of damage. If you can get it out of the way with in the beginning, do so. Or if you do it like JPD did in his attacks, where you can hit the Monolith over the top of the Town Hall or over the side of the Town Hall, but saving the Town Hall, not Town Hall, saving, you definitely don't want to save the Town Hall for last, but saving that Monolith for last can be extremely difficult. Now, he does have Oh, and actually, just noticed those Super Bowler triple bounces actually were able to take down the Monolith. Absolutely beautiful. So this is a little bit different way to use the T-Toller attack. Hopefully this, this video helps give you some ideas. I'm going to have to make some adjustments on my army because I've been using Super Bowlers in my Legends League attacks, and it's not going as well as I would like. If you like this video, make sure that you give us a like. Make sure you subscribe to this channel. Until then, we will see you next video. This is Tip Dog 20, signing out.